My name's Graham Brown Martin. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, gamers one and all, I hope. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to this second game-based learning conference. Although, in truth, my organization, Learning Without Frontiers, has been featuring some of the leading thinkers and practitioners from the industry and education at our various gatherings and communities during the past five years. It's a testament to this rapidly expanding, innovative, and quite often independent approach to new learning, largely unfettered by government intervention or direction, that this event continues to expand and welcome into it so many different communities of interest from schools to business to healthcare and military. I would ask that during these two days, you maintain your open mind and connect with those who have may hitherto not been on your radar. It's these chance meetings and conversations born that go a long way to give this conference its unique personality and value. For whilst we are spoilt for choice with the quality of this year's speakers, it is you who are the, co who are the conference. This is why we place so much emphasis on the social dialogue that happens in the breaks and why we trust that you will take part in one of this evening's open discussion sessions followed by the social at the elbow room and we are playing for money. Joke. Okay, well, I'm the warm-up act for Tom, by the way. At this point, I would like to thank all those who have contributed to make this event happen. My advisory group, our conference supporters, Nintendo, Heart of England Regional Development Agency, and Becta, our associates and media supporters, and all the organizations who are participating in the Experience Lounge. I'd like to take a moment of your time here to reflect upon the opportunity that is available to us from gatherings such as this, and how this potentially affects the bigger picture of our national economy and well-being. It seems practically obligatory to mention this current financial climate, a cliche that now appears in everything from the speeches of statesmen to press releases selling cheaper and more efficient mousetraps. So here's my take. I'm not an economist, but I'd say that the main factor leading to our current national debt of 850 billion has nothing to do with the 37 billion cost of bank nationalization, which is paltry by comparison. Neither does it have anything to do with the stimulus scheme. The principal factor feeding the deficit was a recession triggered by the banking collapse during which this country's output plummeted. This continued pandering to the media with bluff and bluster over national debt is overbaked, in my opinion. Stop messing around with cuts and start telling us about growth. Start telling us how we will stimulate the talent of tomorrow that will lead this growth and how we will ensure an environment that guarantees this growth will happen here. In my opinion, the video game, social and digital media sectors will be a good place to start. It's good to see that government is taking first steps by implementing tax relief for game developers, but this is insufficient. Pandering to the UK game industry who blame their decline from global leader to mediocrity on others will not lead to growth. We need to see game industry trade associations reset their targets from lobbying government and focus instead on the education sector to encourage their members to take the education sector as seriously as they'd like them to take their games. We need the education sector to stop being so precious and properly engage with industry, recognizing that industry doesn't understand education speak any more than education knows how to make a decent game. Whilst industry knows the skills that they need, they don't often know how to ask for them. So rely on the same qualifications that they, that they had themselves without knowing that the syllabi had changed. The inevitable result is that industry complains that students today are, well, are ill-prepared perhaps a tax incentivized scheme whereby teachers can take sabbaticals during the academic breaks to work in sector, or even vice versa. Too often the language between the education sector and industry is confused when neither understands the other, while we get swept into the footnotes of history and migrate from being a nation of creative innovators to being a nation of call center workers to service the corporations of emerging nations who, unhampered by an archaic education system, are rebooting themselves fit for the future. We need some joined up thinking that sees real stimulus to national growth that could be achieved by linking the interests of the gaming and digital media sectors with the education providers. This must be underpinned by stimulus that engages with private sector investment that doesn't rely on the old school tie, even though I'm wearing one today, although it's not an old school one that the majority of risk-averse venture capital houses have operated in the UK during the past 30 years or more. As always, the UK and indeed the whole of Europe stands upon the precipice of doing the right thing and going for gold. Let's hope that we don't settle for brass. Thank you. A 
At this point, I'm just going to do a few little industry announcements where I'm going to call some people up just to tell us what, what's news before handing over to our morning chairman. The first one I'm going to introduce is Too Simple. So if we can have, uh, I think it's Max that's going to come up from Too Simple to talk the slide. Max Wayne, I'm director of Too Simple Software. Um, as an ex-teacher, about 10 years ago, we decided to start making software that would allow kids to create all sorts of things like tools, um, applications for them to actually paint and create multimedia, things like that. About a year ago, we realised there was one big area that was missing, and that was probably one of the most important areas for kids, and that's creating their own games. So we brought out a piece of software called DIY, which allowed children and teachers to create all sorts of games themselves. Um, I'm glad to say that today we've got a new development with 2DIY. We'll be showing you an online version of it as part of our new Purple Mash website. So if you want to come along and see that, we'll be showing you that today. We've also got some other exciting events, and Anthony is going to very briefly tell you about some of those. OK, just briefly, why don't you come along to our stand today where you can pit your game-making skills against, as Graham said, the talent of tomorrow. We've got 10-year-old programmers who will tutor you in making a simple game, and you can also compete against them in our big game design off. Thank you very much. Yeah, we've got some game designers in here, so it'd be good to see how it works out with the 10-year-olds. Uh, the next uh, announcement I'd like to make with Vanessa Pichard, uh, Dir Director of eStrategy from Vector. Um, I'm pleased to announce on behalf of my organization that from this conference on, we'll be operating the uh, Game-Based Learning Awards 2011. Um, so it will be an awards event next year. We're doing this supported by, by Vector. Uh, very quickly to say we're very pleased to be supporting next year's Game-Based Learning, Learning Awards. It's a very exciting uh, prospect for us. And it's an important development, I think. Important because, uh, well, we survey teachers all the time. We found recently the good news, which is that 80% of them say that um, using digital tools, resources for learning supports improved outcomes for children and young people. That's the good news. But 26% strongly agree with that, which is kind of good news because teachers don't often strongly agree with anything, I think. Um, but uh, I think there's far more potential there for teachers to strongly agree that um, digital tools and resources support learning. How are we going to get game-based learning integrated well, good game-based learning integrated well into teaching and learning in, in classrooms? Well, we do that by convincing teachers. And how do we do that? We do that by having really good examples and exemplars of where it's worked. And that's what these awards are all about. And the next one is a, an interesting one. We, I'm constantly battered. In fact, anyone who attended the last handheld learning conference in October realized I got quite battered from the, uh, those north of uh, Watford Gap uh, for being very London-centric and particularly Shoreditch-centric. So I'm pleased to make the next announcement that um, due to the growth of the game-based learning conference event and particular strength of the West Midlands in this area, we're very excited to announce that next year's game-based learning 2011 will be held in Birmingham. Uh, in the heart of England from March the 28th to, to, the, to, to the 30th. And Birmingham's a great place, I mean, so, so we're looking forward to that. Um, 